This video is going to be a film study look at the moment in, in Sunday's win over the Commanders when the Ravens offense really asserted itself, took control, talking about its tie score, 3-3. Three, three. Ravens take possession of the ball late, early in the second quarter, excuse me, about 13 minutes left in the second quarter. Go to nine plays, 93 yards, touchdown. Of course, Washington answers with a touchdown right back to tie it at 10. And then the Ravens go right back downfield, 10 plays, 78 yards, another touchdown to go up 17-10, which they retain that lead at the half. They scored on their last five possessions. Now, I'm not counting the end-of-game situation where the Ravens are just running out the clock. So at the point that it's 3-3, actually there was a couple of very astute commentators in one of my videos, uh, video previews last week that said, hey, this could turn into a defensive struggle. It actually was for about two or three possessions each. Once the Ravens got the ball early second quarter, I think they had answers for some of the things they were seeing out of the commanders. I think Todd Munkin and Lamar Jackson were on the same page in terms of getting in the right look, utilized multiple guys to really thwart a commander's team that at times was very prepared for certain situations. And I'll try to explain that in two of the plays that I display in this video. So what we're going to do is go over the fourth and fifth possession. I'm not going to do each and every play. I'm going to skip forward a handful of plays uh, two or three times. We've got a couple of false starts here. We also have couple of inconsequential run plays or pass plays. This is just a little snag smash concept that we use all the time. The only difference is, is that we've got full flow with Henry and Ricard following him on the play action, a little snag by the receiver, and then likely trying to get open on the smash concept. Well covered uh, by, by the commanders. I thought that they covered likely better than they covered uh, Andrews, of course, there is a little bit of an oversimplification there because they're playing man at times on likely because of the formation we lined up in. We started to get run game going a little bit on this drive with Derrick Henry. Really nice cutback here out of a basically offset eye formation from 22 personnel. Two tight ends on the field. Fullback kind of canted or kicked over to the right-hand side. We do that. We're generally running to that side. And in fact, we are. It's power. Nice job of disrupting things by this defensive end, 94. So really the point of attack here is getting disrupted on the edge, and Henry kind of sees that, number one. Number two, there's an inside linebacker, number four, who's pressing that gap, so he brings it, cuts it back. Not bad to be able to get five yards on a play where at the point of attack where it's designed to go, you really get nothing done from a blocking standpoint. Critical third down here on the fourth possession. Again, we're tied at three. The Ravens are in 20 personnel, so Ricard is on the field with three receivers on a third down. You would think that Ricard's going to stay in and block, and then the receivers and running back are going to run patterns. I like that. It's com it complements our personnel very well, and in fact, Ricard does chip and then go to release into the flat. So someone has to actually cover him, number one. Number two, it helps us a little bit on that edge. Rosengarten had trouble. I do not think our tackles blocked uh, extremely well against Washington, particularly on the top side. I felt like we had a soft top side on pass rush situations. In this case, Lamar is able to identify the matchup he wants. Look, Bateman and Flowers got everything they wanted against those guys. Same Restel to me is the, is the higher quality, more balanced corner on that roster. Uh, for me personally, and I know people are going to disagree with this, they certainly did in my Discord I don't understand why you have a guy that uh, the talent level of Forbes and he doesn't play over the two guys they played at outside corner for much of Sunday's game who just really got shredded. I mean, they gave up 13 catches on 13 targets and one, uh, two defensive pass interference points. You really can't get any worse than that. So that generated a first down for us. We go right back to Bateman. Again, you got a soft edge here. I haven't looked at the offensive line specifically. I've been looking at pretty much all offensive film up to this afternoon. I have a defensive video out. Tuesday morning at some point about how we contained Jaden Daniels and the guys along the defensive line played exceptional, if you ask me, particularly Yannick Ngakwe. We're getting everything we want out of him. I think he's got to be on the active roster like now. So Henry filling through the B-gap would be able to theoretically help Rosengarten get beat to the top side where he can't lose to me is a little bit of a problem, but Bateman is sitting this route down in the middle. Lamar steps up, slings that thing in there. 23 yards in the middle of the field, in between the hash. Beautiful throw, beautiful play. I really love this concept. So we're 21 personnel, and we go Ram again with Ricard. He's offset to the right. we got two receivers to the left. 
Washington has basically countered with what looks like man and a free safety in the middle of the field. That's appropriate, if you ask me. Still gives us what we want up top, mismatches, both of them, if you ask me. But we run the football with Henry behind Ricard. Unfortunately for Washington, they kick over a defensive tackle to the other side, and we actually run exactly where the space he just vacated. Henry really got loose here uh, in, the, in the third and fourth quarter especially. Like I said, we scored on five consecutive possessions. If we needed to score on that last possession, we would have. That bootleg play and the way Lamar ran it was all designed to just run out the time. Uh, I firmly believe that Washington's defense just is not capable of stopping us consistently with their current roster configuration. What I like about this one is Ricard is literally right there next to the defensive end that he's getting ready to kick out. I think that we're doing this somewhat intentionally. There's been a couple of kickout blocks this year where – I don't want to say he's been there late, but because of the time of his arrival, the defensive ends have been able to do one of these, like an in-out move or an out-in move, basically to reduce their surface contact area such that Ricard can't expand them. In this case, the inside linebacker number four who's walked up has no choice but to swim in a penalty call there. I mean, I would say so. It's Fowler. He played a really nice game, by the way. We've got two running backs in the backfield, Henry and Justice Hill and Likely and Andrews up to the top side. Likely is in an alignment such that he could get to the other side of the formation, and in fact, I believe it is a dual read option. It could be a give to Derrick Henry. Now, for, for my money, I want to give the football here, depending on what Lamar is reading. I mean, if he's reading this right here, this is a give. If he's reading a second-level defender who started to move in this direction, then fine. Perhaps he's reading the defensive tackle. That is possible. I've seen read to me. But credit to Washington for how they played this and how they destroyed QB counter. They've got a linebacker here. I think he is looking directly at Isaiah Likely. I don't think he's looking in the backfield to running backs at all. I think he's doing what we would call a cross key. To support, I think they pulled the flag. It ends up being a loss of two, creates a second and 12. Lamar here ex uh, demonstrates, I think, nice patience. Nothing is available to us on this pass concept here. I mean, uh, Bateman, we're trying to work him in behind here, behind likely on the little hook or snag. Nothing developing at all from any of the receivers or tight ends. Lamar really, at the last second possible, gets this thing out here to Justice Hill. I thought Rosengarten had trouble with Fowler. I don't know how many pressures he was credited with. I don't really look up or trust those things because pressures are defined in a different way, to be honest with you. But Fowler, to me, had an impact, very athletic, very quick, and was able to redirect on this play, get in there, get to Lamar, thankfully for us, just after we threw the football, Kroon, or someone win a matchup where there's help to one side or the other. It kind of shocks me sometimes, a Ravens fan or a Commanders fan probably, you may disagree with that assessment, meaning – you may say, well, I, I think we could guard Zay Flowers from a commander's perspective. I don't think you could guard Zay Flowers or Rashad Bateman yesterday. And then wrong arm it. Here's Wagner. He's going to skip to the outside, and he's going to go underneath the block by Ricard. Basically, he sets it to the outside. Fowler, as well, is kind of pinching down, just destroying the guard. And Henry's just so good, he just says, okay, I'll just bounce it outside, take it in the end zone, three-yard touchdown. 10-3 lead for the Ravens. He's just that good. He's just that good. It's a border do. It's left in the second quarter. Washington, to their credit, is able to use the screen game, some somewhat um, anomalous plays to get down the field and tie it at 10. I think right here is where the Ravens really said, all right, we can throw the football on these guys. We can throw the football on these matchups pretty much wherever we want to. First play of the ensuing possession, fifth possession, in fact. 20 personnel play action. We go Flowers over the middle. 20 personnel last year was a tremendous grouping for us. We can still run the football out of 20 personnel. But with three receivers on the field, you as a defense really are, are forced to go into your nickel defense. So there's some real, very real advantages there. Washington is bringing actually the nickel defender on a blitz. Henry does a nice, has been reported a little bit on social media from some of the rating services that I've seen. Going to be a DPI down here at the bottom side of, of the screen. Actually, I don't know that they call this on same restall. I think they call it on the receiver in the middle of the field. I think they call it here on Aguilar, I believe. Bateman, the targeted receiver, I don't think is the um, 
is where the penalty is. I mean, you got a ton of contact here. The replay on the television showed this matchup, and I'm not—I don't think that's where it was. What was called? It was actually Flowers who ended up being open, uh, wide open. In fact, it gives us a first down. That's the only time where a ball was thrown to either of those guys and it ended up incomplete. Actually, I guess two of them, and in both cases, it was a defensive pass interference on the Commanders. I did not like this call. Still, do not like this call. I feel like empty is a drive killer at times. Three minutes left in the second quarter, and um, I think we're putting our offensive line in possibly a lose-lose situation. I think we are trying to – now, look, it's also possible that game plan-wise you look at a team and you say, well, how do they cover empty? That's one of your check boxes. How do they cover empty? And if they give you a specific coverage, you say, all right, well, we can go to this concept and we're going to get a one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to get some space. And look, we have hit the slot fade in the past. Nelson Aguilar gets off to a really, really slow start here off the line. I mean, watch when the ball was snapped versus when Aguilar actually gets off the line. I'll run it back just at the point of his start. Remember when Owe, his first couple of years, we were talking about how slow he was off the ball? That's what this looks like to me. We're just we're almost stepping back at the snap, really a false step by his back foot. Is it the reason why we don't catch the ball? Well, no, not necessarily. But when you get off to a slow start off the line, it's going to impact you 20 or 22 yards down the field. You could have been 23 or 24 yards down the field. Creates a second and 10. And again, we go to Flowers, uh, uh, absolute matchup problem for them. On these inside releases, Lamar getting the ball off right before he was hit. I thought there was three situations where if Lamar doesn't make the decision quickly, then we're in trouble and at risk for possibly a forced fumble. Another situation where we've got a soft edge up top here, is Lamar fading back too far? I don't necessarily think so. I think Lamar's drop is supposed to be pretty much where it is. Is it possible his footwork pushed it back another half a yard? I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to leave my I'm going to leave my matchup advantages Flowers and Bateman and even Mark Andrews. This is bait. I love this play. And again, credit to the commanders. They're identifying a tight end in the backfield here, which is pretty much the same thing they did on the dual read option where Lamar kept it and Dante Fowler tackles him on the sideline and everyone was asking for a hip drop tackle. I think they're rolling this safety up opposite in case Lamar keeps it on the option. The only Five or six times at identifying things that were run game indicators, basically alignments for us that tell you kind of a directional pattern that we have in terms of the dual read where likely would go out in front of Lamar who would keep it and they run out onto the edge. We've used that many times this year to great effect. They stopped that. They stopped QB counter twice. I think here that boundary safety is walking down because of the formation and then it's documenting it. I didn't know that this was 11 personnel. I thought it was 21. I thought Ricard was in the backfield and we had a tight end down here. So it's a cool adaptation with Andrews in the backfield with Henry in 11 personnel, basically creating a 20 personnel formation out of a really nice play call by Todd Monk in there, if you ask me. Lamar finding a wide open Aguilar over the middle. I think the, the commanders kind of overcommitted themselves to the tell, the pattern, and Monk made them pay. Another example where I think they have identified exactly what's coming. By they, I mean the commanders. Yeah, everybody's like, well, you know, should Lamar give it? Should Lamar keep it? Look, it really kind of doesn't matter. Because if Lamar gives it, number four, the inside linebacker who's walked up at edge, he is capable of making that play. He's got his outside arm free. And I'll show you the play again so you can see how he got there. Additional to that, Fowler is running right at Lamar for if and when Lamar, in fact, keeps it. If Lamar is reading Fowler, it should be a give. If Lamar is reading number four, who's out on the edge, watch how they make this work. When Likely comes down here and gets close to the right tackle, this is the inside linebacker. He's going to move to outside leverage of Likely. Why? It's a tell because we've got the running back in the backfield, and, and where is Henry? Um, excuse me, where is Hill? Even. His feet are even. It's not easy to see that from a defensive standpoint. I've dealt with that dynamic before. I'm sure if you're, you, you've coached on the defensive side, you have as well. Oh, the back is deeper on this play. He's even with the quarterback on this. He's in front of the quarterback on pass plays. 
it's tough to ID that. You kind of have to find one player who can do it. Whatever Washington was seeing, they were identifying it well against QB counter read, against the, the, the tight ends possibly in a dual read situation. Fowler's on Lamar. Four is outside leverage of likely possibly for the give. And then, oh, by the way, you have a DB in man on likely if likely was to run a route. Really well defended. If you ask me credit to the commanders, they actually did that, that same exact look twice against QB counter, blew it up both times. Third and five here, they go sticks. And one of our answers um, for sticks last week against the Bengals, a backside drag. And here it is again. Now, it's not necessarily sticks the way that teams have played it before. You're basically getting a, a mug look with multiple guys up on the line of scrimmage. So it's not sticks from the standpoint, sticks blitz zero from the standpoint the guys are reading it, they're dropping out, depending on if an offensive lineman steps to them or not. I'm calling it sticks ubiquitously when they have six or seven guys lined up on a line of scrimmage in a threatening manner. Basically, they could all blitz. And in this case, six of them actually do. Man on flowers, impossible from that alignment, especially with Andrews running what basically is a shield route. He doesn't necessarily contact that guy. He certainly slows up. Looks like a lot of things Travis Kelsey does. Flowers wide open, 15 yards. We are absolutely decimating that look this year, which as a Ravens fan, like I don't even know if I really wanted to verbalize that because of how horrifying it's been up to 2024. Lamar actually looked down here first and then came back to the drag. So what's being built in here is options on the front side, the bottom side of our screen, Lamar's right, and the backside drag, which is, at this point in time, is always open in this offense. It's particularly against stick splits zero or mug man uh, blitzes. Beautiful play. And I saw this one. I was like, oh, boy, we are, we are really into them now. Um, even, and I didn't like the QB counter read play at all, to be honest with you. This one is another snag smash concept uh, to likely. I don't know if, I mean, Lamar looks like he throws this ball further towards the back of the end zone. The L22 angle seems a little deceiving to me, but you certainly would like for this ball to be put in a place where likely can catch it. Lamar's kind of leaned back a little bit. Maybe that angle of his upper body, maybe my drawing there was a little bit inaccurate or offline. But likely's running on this path here. Lamar taking the matchup, I'm fine with it. Likely does a good job. Normally he did get redirected at hip level hip or stomach level, so that pushed him maybe a little more towards the bottom side of our screen. I'd like for that ball to be a little bit more catchable for Isaiah Likely on the snag smash. I had skipped forward a couple of plays. Like I said, I wasn't going to go over all of these. I'll give you two angles of this one. First touchdown of the season to Mark Andrews. It sounds crazy to say. I, I, said, I did say this in another video. I think it was June on or somebody was, was talking about it. I'm not a big fan of the backside drag here. If we think we are getting quarter, quarter, half. So if we cover six, what a lot of people call it because they play Madden and stuff. Quarter, quarter, half has been around for a whole lot longer than Vic Fangio. Um, just so you know, number one, number two, I would like to occupy this guy so that he can't, there's nothing for him to do. One goes under. If he's pattern reading and not just staring at the quarterback, then theoretically he can find some work, go find some work. And there's no work for him to be found. It's kind of surprising to me at the lower levels that I've coached at, like we had drills that were built in whereby we intentionally had the script set up to where there was no work for you, the backside safety, even the backside corner. And then we have a specific coach who's denoted on the practice schedule, play number 17, watch Bert and Sean and see if they find backside work because there won't be anything for them. And, and so when I say these things to you I, on a much lower level, I've seen scripts, I've created the scripts myself to ensure that people are finding work. This is one of my issues with just staring in the backfield at the quarterback. Eventually, however, the safety does look at Andrews, just doesn't get over there quick enough. Why? Because he keeps staring back at the quarterback. It's a great throw by Lamar. I'm being picky about staring at the quarterback. I think it's been an issue for our defense, and I understand. I also know that we just generated a touchdown against quarter, quarter, half. It's not that guy's area of the field. He's a half-field defender, and he's got no work to his half. Find some work. It's a grand to see Andrews get his first touchdown. He played with a lot of force. He beat them in man one time, had a 38-yard catch on a, on a sale concept, and then gets this touchdown. I'm talking about Likely and Andrews splitting this safety. Again, you've got quarter, quarter, half, so 
Those two up to the top side, the corner and the safety, are responsible for one-fourth of the field. Conceptually, it doesn't always work that, out like that, but likely is running the vertical to the outside of the safety. And Andrews is just – he can't get caught up. He can't get muddied up at the second level here. And he also can't take his route too far in this direction to get around him because now he's bringing this safety into play. So they want to split that guy, and Lamar knows that, throws it into the vacated area. Beautiful read, beautiful play. Andrews, first touchdown of the year. I think this is the moment where, for me, and even in our Discord, I said to the guys, I was like, guys, we're, we're at 10 yards per pass play in the first half. That I didn't say, is this sustainable? By the end of the game, we were at 11. Like we, we threw the ball for a higher yards per play, yards per attempt in the second half than we did in the first half when we were absolutely on fire on these two possessions. Lamar deserves a lot of credit. I probably in this video didn't talk about him enough. I feel like that's understood. I feel like that's baseline that Lamar is playing at an unbelievable level, executing all of the things that Munkin is calling. And so many guys are involved with this offense. It's crazy to think about. You might go through five-game stretch in the season where a guy like Mark Andrews doesn't have a touchdown catch, hasn't really made big plays, and in fact, I think he had one or two drops so far that was a little bit surprising this year, and then yesterday looked like exactly who he is, Mark Andrews, tight end slash playmaker, who scores touchdowns. The same thing could happen to Zay I don't Actually, I don't think the same thing could happen to Zay Flowers. At this point, he's a totally different animal than he was last year. I think Zay's going to have consistent impact as a floor probably four or five, six catches a game, unless he's just not needed in the, in the game plan, like the games where we just run the ball down people's throat, throat with Derrick Henry. It's a unique offense, number one. It's a unique offense for the Ravens from a historical standpoint. I think this might be the best offense we've ever had, and I'm, I feel comfortable saying that after six games because of the amount of weapons that are there, the amount of guys who can make plays. Justice Hill would be... Out of all the position players that get on the field, I guess he'd be the least dangerous guy, him or Nelson Aguilar, Charlie Kolar, I guess. All three of those guys have made big plays this year. One of them, Only one of them made a big play yesterday, Aguilar with the 25-yard catch. Kolar the week before against the Bengals had a touchdown and a 55-yard catch. Justice Hill three weeks ago, I think, against the Bills, led the team in catches. You get the idea. This reminds me of a bet. I never was a fan of the San Antonio Spurs. I just was not. But they were inevitable because Popovich taught them to play defense. They also shared the ball. They didn't care who scored. That's what this offense reminds me of. Recall the NBA Finals, if you're a basketball fan, if you're not, my apologies, where Danny Green, a at one point in time journeyman player in the NBA, still a great basketball player because he's a professional basketball player, was absolutely the front runner for NBA Finals MVP through three games. He was hitting like 72% of his three-pointers. And that was only because the Spurs share the ball. They find the open guy. I have to reluctantly, begrud begrudgingly, give credit to Popovich for the system he created and the fact that those guys got high percentage shots. This Ravens offense reminds me of that, except we have an absolute star, two of them, in the backfield, in Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, that can just basically, in a basket, from a basketball perspective, win one-on-ones. Win -on Appreciate you guys' time, man. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. This one took me a while to produce. I will transition to defensive film study videos on Tuesday, specifically focusing on our defensive line, and then also some footage and film and analysis of Roquan Smith. Appreciate you guys' time.